First thing I do, just open the store, put music on, turn the lights on, get the drawer ready, and then I take care of the mail order customers because I'm kind of against the clock with the mailman. I want to get everything stamped, wrapped with my help of um, Chachi, my buddy. I go through all these orders to check and see if someone has, has uh, ordered before. If they haven't ordered, they get a free sticker and like a thank you line. It's all about getting the person to keep ordering and like letting them know that we're all on the same team. We're not like some big corporate bullshit. We're just a few people. It's a cool building. I mean, it's 110 years old, which is pretty old for California. Um, it was the first post office, but before it was the post office, it was like a general store. And then when I got it, it was an antique slash junk store. Then I found out later the guy was selling drugs out of here. And yeah, it was really run down. It took about four months to fix it up. I got into punk maybe 1979, 1980. I was buying records at local record stores. And then several years later, uh, I decided to do a mail order. You know, I, I typed out literally on a typewriter and I would just put an ad, a classified ad, just saying, hey, send me one stamp and I'll send you a list of all the records I have. So that's basically how it started, uh, just for fun. I was waiting tables at that time, going to school part-time, and it's just because I loved music. And then a year later, I decided, wouldn't that be cool to put a record out? Just one record, that's all I ever wanted to do, was just one record to say I did it. So I did it and it was fun, so I kept doing it and doing it. Basically, if I like it, I'll do it. It doesn't matter if it's gonna sell, because I don't plan on anything selling. It's just a labor of love. I think I've always kind of had a passion for music. I mean, like, I remember being a kid in the 70s, in the early 70s, and almost every weekend, I would wake up to music. But there's certain bands in your life that make things kind of click. And one band that made me click, I was 15, it was listening to Devo. Like, this is weird, you know, like, what is this? The first time I cut my hair, I was I was listening to Devo, you know, looked at myself in the mirror, and I grabbed just the top of my hair, like a finger length, and just started cutting my hair. I'm like, oh my God, you know, it was exciting. It was really, it was really cool. And then I got into other, you know, types of music. But Devo was probably one of the first. There's only two of us that had a mohawk, you know, and people would stare at you, and a lot of times people would say, oh, how do you stand it up? And, you know, they were nice about it. And then other people, would, as soon as you walk by, they'd laugh at you. Or I remember a million times driving my car, people honking, flipping you off, you know, fuck you, and... But that's, that's fine, that's fun. Punk is very, for the most part, is very heartfelt. You're in it to, to say something or to make a positive change. Society was full on against punk rock because it was very alien. It was violent, it was anti-parent, anti-government, and it, it was. I can understand why people, you know, are kind of standoffish or worried about it and all the stuff they would show on TV, the riots at the gigs, which did happen, but one way people let the anger out was through music. And if the parents or the authorities or whoever would have actually read the lyrics, I'm sure they would say, oh, I get it, and I actually agree. Yeah, it was, it was rough, you know? You'd feel threatened because you were threatened, especially during the early 80s, you know, like when I was in high school and I grew up. It's a different time. Uh, having a Cold War with Russia, that was a real possibility of a nuclear war. Me and my friends had a whole plan of when we see it on TV, like the bombs have launched, we're gonna meet here, have one last drink, and all die together. It wasn't a joke, and it wasn't a joke for, for most people. A lot of people thought that way because it was things were so tense. Back then, that's what punk was mostly about, was you know, anti-war, anti-government, let's not have this war, let's not have this nuclear annihilation, because it was we were on the edge. Music is so powerful. You know, it has even more than, than uh, television or, or reading, music has a way to really motivate people in a certain direction. I still listen to cassettes, I still listen to vinyl, especially vinyl. Vinyl just sounds better. I'm, I'm very, I hate the sheep mentality, okay? And Apple is just the epitome of the sheep mentality. Buy it again, buy it again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Vinyl was never broke. Vinyl always sounded better than any other format. 
but people just they just follow these trends. You know, when, when I was a kid, you bought a record, you weren't allowed to pick and choose what songs you wanted. You bought the whole LP. And some of them, of those songs were good, some of the songs were not. But it was part of the feel of what the artist, the band wanted, you know? Like, songs go together for certain reason on certain, certain bands. You're really missing out and you're not giving the artist the justice when you say, I'm just gonna buy track three on, on iTunes, and that's it. It died down when CDs took over. It almost was dead completely, and that really hurt me, all independent record stores. And like during the recession, that was super, super stressful. You can live without playing music. You can live without buying a, a record or a CD or a cassette. That's not going to affect you. But you need food and shelter, so a lot of people, it's not like they didn't want to, they just didn't have the money. But I have a really loyal fan base and we're all in it together, especially with punk, it's such a good community, people watching out for each other. So they would come in whenever they could, and it's heartfelt that I'm only here because of people. You know, I've been doing this for 27 years, and in 27 years, I haven't, in my opinion, I haven't worked a day, because this isn't work. There's a lot of work to do, but it's still fun. So I really appreciate everyone's support, you know, that walk into the store, or people that order online and you know I'm, I'm here because of their support and I really appreciate it. We're all in this together. You know, it's, punk rock is a big group effort. It's a family. You never see them in broad daylight. They never come out until it's night. The sick of suffering with shock and pill. You're a suffering man looking. They're the ones hiding in the park. Clouds and dragons. Like good bites or like oh, little? Oh fuck yeah, like rip you the fucking, he's a nutshot, that guy's a nutshot.